Dr. Pratibha Mahanama, distinguished guests, and my friends. The Kothalawala Defense University has launched this program, International Symposium. On the subject of national security, I think, at the most important and needed hour, especially in taking into consideration that ours is a conflict-ridden nation. During the last 30 years, that we had the most horrendous war that had prevailed in the world during the last century. The war is a part of the human, human beings. From the day, although we say that we are civilized, from the day that we commence to civilize, the war has become a part and parcel of the human beings. That is the system. Now, Sir Arnold Toimbi, the greatest historian in the world, who was the head of the his history department in the uh, Oxford University, has written a book about this. Then, with all the examples that he has proved, the longest period that existed in the world without a war is only 14 years. That is the longest period ever existed in the world without a war in anywhere. Now with that one you can understand as to how this human conflicts arises. And especially the war has began due to various reasons, the mostly on conflict which had, which had emerged due to language differences and religion differences. The within the religions also that there had been serious wars that had erupted by disrupting the world peace. And after the de devastation that we had experienced during the First World War and also in the Second World War, the world powerful nations got together and they formed the United Nations. The basic uh, the goal that was to achieve in, through this international organization is to maintain the peace in the world. But due to various reasons, that goal has not been achieved. There are so many reasons for it. During the last 30, 40 years, that if you just, in your hindsight, can have a, the insight look at on these things that you may realize, the United Nations, that they have forgotten their main, the main duty to prevent the wars being erupted, but instead that they are holding postmortems. Now, when it comes to security, that is twofold. One is uh, in individual security. In a democracy, it is a transaction, it is an exchange that we surrender our sovereignty to the rulers, to the government, with the expectation that they must give the security to our personal life as well as to the nation. That is why I said that is twofold. One is the government is bound to give us the individual security. Secondly, the government is bound to give us the security nationwide, overall security arrangement. But when we say that security arrangement, basically it is an internal security means that the, the will have to that safeguard our rights from the people who are living with us in our own society. When it says national security, it is normally known as a threat from the outside. But during the last so many decades, the most of the countries have experienced that ex it, it is worse than the external threats, that there are internal threats emerging in a similar way, that is called terrorism. The main purpose of the establishment of the United Nations is to prevent that. Now, if we straight away come to the point, as far as our country is concerned, since 1983 that we had 
the terrorism, there had been a lot of devastations, disasters, catastrophes occurred in this country and the United Nations, I feel that they did not that they did not do their duty in conformity with the United Nations Convention. Now after the war that they have taken so much of interest to see whether the war has been fought in a reasonable way, whether the war had been fought without any casualty, all sort of things are unwarranted provided that they did perform their duties to prevent the war. When there is a terrorism in a country, there is no exception that is against the law of the nation as well as the it is against the laws of the United Nations. The terrorism is against our local laws, terrorism is against the laws of the United Nations. But while the security forces, the lawful security forces were fighting for a period of Three, three decades, the United Nations did not take, did not play an active role to prevent it. That is the issue. And therefore, that however much we talk about the international peace, the equality before the law, the even that United Nations start a commencing, it commences with the a sentence which says that all the countries are equal. But with all that, there are hidden agendas where that nobody has the control over it. Therefore, that's however much the convention is drafted so nicely, well worded, but that there are hidden agendas that basically they just to achieve the, just to retain the powers of the powerful nation. And therefore, that we being the developing countries or underdeveloped countries, we have an option that we'll have to face all these problems while uh, exercising our diplomatic relations. That is the only way for us to resolve our uh, conflicts with the international nations. And therefore, I will not take much time that there are presenters that who will make valuable contributions uh, and they will disseminate their knowledge with you. So while allowing them to make their presentation for the time being. Uh, I thank you for this invitation and will proceed further in accordance with the agenda. Thank you.